Hello friends, uh, today's video we will be seeing is uh, how to configure Active Directory in Server 2022. Uh, we will see that in a step by step process. Uh, welcome everyone. So why we need an, a local AD? Local AD is also called on-prem AD. So what is a, uh, what is the need for, uh, you know, we can directly just use the Azure AD. So before uh, planning to have a local AD, what are the dependencies that requirement for Active Directory in, in local AD? We can have a hardware uh, and then we can install the Active Directory local AD server in the on-prem location or we can actually install um, a deploy a VM in Azure and use that VM as a local AD. Today's video we will be seeing it as a, a deploying a VM in Azure as a local AD. So let's think about this way, right? Why, why do we need um, uh, an on-prem server or local AD and then uh, most of the uh, organization will have an, a local AD server and then there will be an AD Connect configuration uh, syncing all the uh, data from local AD to Azure AD. What is, what is the main reason, right? So what are the resources that tie to a local AD? So let's think about the authentication. Azure AD authentication uh, versus a local AD authentication. Um, the Azure AD authentication is mostly in the REST API. It's, it's authentication takes place with the REST API. But for the local AD, it is NTLM or Kerberos authentication. So let's say you you have a file server, a local file server, and there is a file shares, and there is a lot of map drives. Uh, all the user workstations are mapped, a lot of drives, and there is a lot of NDFS permissions given to that file share. So that's 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 tied to a local AD. So you you just need to think about it. Let's say you don't need it, then you might need to look up an option to uh, migrate. A local file server to maybe a OneDrive or maybe um, move to a uh, Azure uh, file server or Azure file shares. So that's something that we, we need to think about it. So, so other reason is there are some applications, on-prem applications, CRM or some other application that need authentication from local AD. So that's 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 not work in Azure radio authentication. Those kind of scenario, you should think that uh, you sh you should be needing a local AD. Today we will be demonstrating how to configure Active Directory in Server 22 in Azure, and we will see it as a step by step. And uh, one other thing uh, just came to my mind that think about patching. Let's say let's say the um, computers workstation are joined to local AD domains and then patching is taking place with SCCM so that if SCCM is the patching method you should definitely use the uh, local AD for authentication let's say you don't want to put any hardware uh, and then maintenance and everything you can just deploy that VM in Azure and then use it as a local AD or, or let's say there's another method you can use for patching in tune for workstation management, patching management, you can use in tune. But let's say you have a big infrastructure and you still want to continue with the SCM, um, then I think the better option to have the all the workstation joined to um, local AD domain. Or or all the all the uh, workstation needs to be needs to be joined to Azure AD. So let's managing. Managing is easy. Security wise, um, you know, most of the security experts recommend that you need to have the the compliance purpose and everything. Uh, we need to have the um, local AD authentication. So let's let's get started. Um, so if we're deploying, uh, there there are not much prerequisites uh, required to in deploy. Uh, domain controller uh, uh, as in server 2022 just we need to have an administrative privilege and uh, 
another requirement is to have an a static ip address so we'll just uh, discuss uh, five roles active directory fismo roles um flexible single master operation fismo stands for flexible single master operation roles so there are five roles so basically if you have a lot of i mean like a, we don't recommend just one domain controller uh, multiple um, uh, domain controllers are recommended so let's say if you have three or four domain controller we can sp split these roles to uh, uh, assign to uh, ownership into different different uh, domain controller and microsoft uh, does not recommend the infrastructure master role together with a global catalog um, server and pdc emulator um, to keep it as a separate role so we will i uh, will discuss this in a very uh, very at length uh, later on but uh, let's get started today and then um, just deploy the vm so i logged into the azure portal uh, with my uh, subscription uh, and then i have the deployed a vm it's called ad-vm01 that's a virtual machine i have deployed so it has as a public ip address and also a private ip address in, in the production case scenario uh, in the ad domain controller will be in a separate subnet and it will be it will not be accessible by the public uh, 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 publicly anyone using a public ip address so there there will not be any public ip address for for this demonstration purpose i'm just put in a public ip address so that i can do an rdp and i have opened uh, port 3389 uh, in nsg and network security group uh, but this is not a recommended practice you just need need to have no public ip at all just the private ip and if you wanted to access the internal ip address you need to have an a vpn uh, to connect to the privately uh, or site to site to vpn from your uh, home or not the home from the office to azure we can have express route or the site to site vpn so we'll discuss that later but for the demo purpose, uh, we have the public IP address assigned. The first requirement, if you go to the networking and go to the network interface, the IP, IP config, if you go to click on the IP configuration, you just have to have this uh, IP address. The private IP address has to be static. Right now it's uh, dynamic. We need to make that uh, it has a static. Click on that and then make it static and then save that changes. Once the IP address is static, that means the IP address never be changed. So it is saved. Um, so let's see. So you can see that the um, th this this is not recommended. Um, this uh, setup. See that port three three eight nine is open to from any source and then any destination. It's allowing it. It's it's really it's not a recommended method. Um, you just have to make it at least a source um, to. Um, at least you make it a uh, source uh, whatever the public IP you are uh, trying to access it from uh, uh, so at least uh, you should make what is my IP and then get the public IP what you are trying to access it from so this is uh, my public IP is this one and then you just get that IP address copied and then you go to uh, instead of any just give that ip address and then put it that and then ip address range can be anything but destination is has to be that ip address uh, 10.0.0.4 so this way it is somewhat secure it's um so now i am saving that um, settings it's updated that uh, security role and I can see that now um, it, the, it, it's the port 3389 that's RDP port um, the source will be my IP only nobody else can access only my IP address can access uh, RDP into the server uh, to this uh, 10 .0 this is much better and so let's let's go and uh, log into this um, RDP so MSTSC that will be the uh, remote desktop once it's connect you log in with your local admin okay as soon as you log in this server manager pops up uh, if you don't want to see that once you log in then you can actually um, disable that um, server manager properties you go in there is a don't start server manager automatically at logon 
if you don't want to see it um, so you just go I'm just going to um, add a role for um, um, this uh, I'm going to make this uh, virtual machine as an a DC domain controller so one pool I'm going to select the Active Directory domain services and also a DNS server we're going to have this Active Directory integrated with integrated with um, with uh, uh, integrated DNS um, there is a lot of people will use uh, not the integrated DNS but I think it's recommended uh, Microsoft recommends actually uh, integrated DNS some people use Infoblocks or uh, some other tool that an a just for the DNS uh, resolution uh, DNS server not not an AD integrated DNS uh, we can that talk about it later I uh, just add these features uh, no static IP addresses are found on this computer uh, if the IP address changes clients might not be able to contact the server but we you don't need to make it a static IP on this computer because we already made a static IP on the uh, virtual machine so if you go uh, they're compl complaining about uh, if you do ncpa.cpl directly take you to the network interfaces and then if you go in their properties you can see in the TCP IP version 4 you can see that um, uh, it is uh, assigned automatically that's a DHCP settings you don't need to put on a, a use of following IP address and then set it you don't need to do that because uh, it is a virtual machine uh, it's already been static assigned uh, as, uh, before so you don't need to do it um, okay let's continue this is the uh, just a warning message you can continue uh, continue press next and I is require dotnet framework uh, 4.8 um, so that's automatically been selected next let's install I'll, I'll pause for a second while this installation is going through yeah it's uh, succeeded um, once it's finished it's, uh, it's, prom it's asked you to promote this server to domain controller so in this case this is the new domain controller you just have to put in add new forest root domain name um, for the root domain name I'll be taking it like uh, you know um, I'll be taking uh, the products I have a domain called the goodheartservices.com that thing is going to be expired soon um, just to use it for testing purpose so I take this domain um, and um, I use uh, AD because I'm just wanted to use it as an internal domain not an external so my external domain will be goodheartservices.com this this will be my this will be my external domain ex external verifiable domain um, and um, AD dot AD dot will be the my internal domain so click next so here we will be selecting at the forest functional level and domain functional level um, you can see that it is um, Windows Server 2016 and after that Microsoft did not change anything in the latest they have not updated the forest and domain functional level so whatever available right now the latest is like 2016 so even this server is 2022 server and still we have the available is Windows Server 2016 you select that by default it has selected a domain name system DNS server and global catalog and then you also have to give the directory service of restore mode DSRM the DSRM is the uh, it's kind of a, something uh, corrupted in active directory then you want to restore it you just have to go to this mode while restarting to domain controller you go to this mode and then restore it that's why this is important to remember these passwords somewhere a password you know never put it in down the paper or somewhere because this is somebody can access to the active directory they can get in the domain this uh, you know domain admin password and everything so just put it in somewhere secure um, use some tool called LastPass or somewhere um, and then save it um, this one this might be needed in case we need to recover Active Directory uh, for any corruptions. 
uh, this is fine the parent zone is not followed this is the first time we are uh, deploying it the net bias name will be the short name for the fully qualified name the fqdn the fully qualified name is the long name uh, like ad dot good hard services dot com the short name will be the ad net bias domain name okay by default the database log files and sysfault folder everything will be in a c windows folder and if you wanted to change you can just add one more disk into the uh, azure vm and then uh, you know that will be in like f drive or something and then you can change c to f uh, but by default uh, for now we'll just keep it for c I review these uh, selections uh, this will be global catalog and dns server as well you can just copy this one if you want the notepad and then keep it for uh, you know for your reference and then next so now it will be um, validating the active directory domain services and then uh, it will be installing it okay all prerequisites checks passed successfully so now click install to begin uh, installation uh, you can also see some of the uh, um, uh, results as some of the you know physical network adapter does not have static ip address uh, dns server I cannot create it because the authoritative zone is not as but it's a pass you can see a check mark green so you can just uh, install uh, just continue the installation uh, i'll pause you can see the step the progress uh, it says uh, progress is going on uh, installation is started and the uh, installation is completed the server successfully configured as a domain controller so this this, this virtual machine is now is a domain controller so the computer is being restarted so it's going to be restarted so it's uh, um, it's restarted the server restarted it's uh, I'm just going to log in again um, okay so it's uh, i logged in successfully just verify the installation uh, active directory so you get all this option active directory just check the active directory users and computers and you can see that um, it is accessible ad.hoodhardservices.com uh, and um, we can just create an ou and it then uh, whatever the structure you can have within the it that is an uh, ou kind of a department and then in that inside that you can have usually uh, we can have computers that means all the uh, workstation will be joined to here all the it computers join here and then here we can have uh, another organization unit for users and uh, we can have another IT and another uh, organization unit maybe for security groups uh, depends upon the uh, structure you, you wanted to keep it for this one so the, the advantage that uh, whenever you have a group policy we can apply it to this OU level IT and then it will apply it to all of these computers users and security groups so in users i might uh, want to just create another one user just put uh, admin and then uh, admin so this user can log into ad slash admin and then then this domain user can uh, log in i'll keep um, I'll give the password never expires. This is for testing purpose. And then security groups are like for maybe a file sharing in security group or um, and then you can add multiple users into it. Um, and then if you have an uh, AD connector, next uh, video we will see how to install an AD connect and then sync all the users, computers and security groups uh, into Azure AD so that it can 
uh, use the Azure Radio authentication with the SSO, single sign-on, uh, etc. And also it can have hybrid, hybrid AD, so both, both Azure AD as well as the um, local AD. Uh, one thing to check on this in cpa.cpl and then when you install the first time you go to the network interfaces the DNS won't be the loopback address so I already you know, see that one is once is our loopback address 127.0.0.1 so um, it's changed this one into the actual IP address of the this server itself 10.0.0.4 and close that okay so active directory is um, is working fine just check the DNS okay DNS if you go into DNS forward lookup zone there are two zones one is a default MS DCS and all the uh, active directory and you can also already see that AD slash BM01 DC that address is already there so go to reverse lookup zone there is no reverse lookup zone so we need to add a new zone reverse lookup zone continue then the primary zone um, to all DNS servers running on domain controllers yes and IP version 4 and then put 10 dot 0 dot next it's called lookup type is reverse finish and then you can see that it's created um, it doesn't have that entry uh, so what we need to go into go into the primary lookup zone and go into this air record and uh, the properties and then just put an update uh, associated pointer PTR PTR is the reverse uh, lookup so apply okay then go back to the reverse lookup zone uh, just refresh, you go into this one, it's still not come, just for a refresh, see that sub PTR record has been uh, completed. So th this will be end of the um, uh, domain controller and integrated DNS uh, installation. Um, we will see you next time. Uh, thank you for watching.